Hello, I'm going to try and do my labour and delivery video again. I tried doing it before, but it's all, I should really actually have notes, and I'm doing it again, and have I got notes? No, I haven't, and I'm eating blueberries. I love blueberries. Um, as I said in the last video, Edith was born at um, 9.30 on the 13th of July. The bit I didn't say, which is a bit mad, I have, I'll just stop eating them. So good. The bit I didn't say in that, I just said it was a different neighbour. The reason it was different and the reason it was a bit crazy um, is because it was two hours start to finish. In my notes, um, it documented down that I had a 23 minute labour, according to the hospital. Stop, 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 stop. Put them over there. Um, it was fast. It was exceptionally fast. It was um, extremely overwhelming. It was amazing, but I do not wish to do it again. Like Alice's, hold on. Alice's birth was just divine. This birth was oh, just overwhelming is the only only way I could actually describe this birth. It was um, amazing. Wasn't it, Bubba? You were amazing. You are amazing. I can't really see this video. Baby girl. Little baby girl. I don't know if you can see, she's got a birthmark over her eye, but um, well, well, we think it's a birthmark. It's either a bruise or a birthmark, but we're thinking birthmark. Um, but it could fade, it could get worse, we don't know. We'll, we'll soon find out. Time will tell on that front, won't it, Pickle? Whoever hated Carla's kissing of Hannah in her videos are probably going to hate me too. Yeah. So, getting on with the labour and delivery, two minutes, and I haven't actually said anything about that. I woke up, I, well, I didn't really sleep the night before I had her, and I keep saying I'll we'll stop doing it. It's because Daddy's in charge, and Mummy's not paying any attention. Um, I hadn't really slept. My back was aching. I was really, really uncomfortable. I was restless. I was up pacing the lounge. Um, yeah, I just couldn't, I couldn't sit, I couldn't lay down, I couldn't, I just, I was up and pacing. Um, I didn't get excited by that because, uh, obviously, as I said in my week 39 vlog, the same thing had happened three nights in a row, so I was just like, oh, great, here we go again. Um, I'll clear it up in a minute, Alice. Um, so yeah, I didn't get excited or anything like that, I was just like, oh well, oh joy and um, just carry on and then I started getting like I, it came to 7 o'clock I started to get grumbles and at like 5 past 7 I heard the back gate open unlock and open and Darren was going to work so I suddenly thought oh my god I think I'm having this baby today so I opened the window and I called out Darren can you come in a minute please and he sort of came in and he said you know what's up and I said I think I'm going into labour he's like oh you can track in or water's broken or anything I was like nope just period grumbles but feels like it's, I'm going to go into labour and he said, oh, well, how about I just go into work and you call me? I was like, no, 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 you're staying home. Um, you know, I feel like I'm going into labour. He's like, oh, okay then. Um, so he texts work saying, you know, if I'm going to stay and drop the kids off at school. And if she's gone into labour by nine o'clock, then I'll be staying off. But if she hasn't really gone into real labour by nine o'clock, then I'll go into work, I'll take the car and I'll see if Emily will help you pick Alice up. I'm sure your mum will get George. And I was like, yeah, 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 that'll be fine. Okay, not a problem. Um, so yeah that was that and then she text I text my mum saying you know think I'm having a baby today would you be able to pick George up from school and that later and she's like yeah yeah do you want me to come and take the kids to school and I was like no no it'll be fine I'm sure you know we'll go to we'll see if I'm in labour by nine o'clock and um, if so we'll probably go into hospital after we drop the kids off so the kids aren't affected at all or anything and um, she's like okay okay and then the contractions started coming. Uh, I had the very first one at half past seven. And I was like, ow, that was a real contraction. And um, then, like, three minutes later, there's another one. And three minutes later, there's another one. And three minutes later, another one. You can get the pattern here. And they get stronger and stronger and stronger straight away. I was like, oh, my Lord, this is, this is terrifying. I was like, this is scary. Um, like how quickly it's all going and everything. And I ended up ringing up my mum going, yeah, yeah, you can't, you're gonna have, can you come take kids to school? I don't think I'm gonna make it that long. 
She's like, oh, is it really quick? I was like, yeah, yeah, it's going really, really quickly. She's like, okay, right, uh, have I got time to hang out laundry? I was like, yeah, if you really, really want to. She's like, yeah, you don't sound sure. I'm, I'll, I'll just come around now. Thank God she did because she got here and I was like, oh, we, we've got to go now. Oh, I'll see you later, kids. <laughs> have fun at school. I love you, bye, sort of thing. And literally waited for mum to take the kids into the car and we jumped into the car. It was like quarter to, well, no, about half past eight. And so I'd been in labour for like an hour by the time mum had got there and everything. I was just like overwhelmed by it all. And um, so, yeah, I'd been in labour for like an hour and it didn't actually feel like it had been there at that point. It had gone really, really quickly. So we were, we were in the car and then we were just about to leave. And then suddenly went, oh, we haven't rung the hospital to tell them we we're on our way. So we rang them and they were like, yeah, come on in. So um, my water hadn't gone or anything. I was just contracting. And so we got into the car and the kids went off to school and played school with Mama. And then um, we got in the car and we're driving along and of course it's half past eight. Get stuck in a massive, massive traffic jam. It usually takes ten minutes to get to the hospital and it took us a half an hour. Um, we're just under half an hour really. So we were stuck. We, um, yeah, so we were in the car and I was contracting every few minutes and I was actually hanging on to the handrail by the door going, oh, wow, wow, I don't like this, I think we're going to get in the car. And it was just really, really strong, really, really fast. And I'm sorry, no, I'm not really firing. You should probably have left this a bit longer, but stuff it. Um, I was really, like, just panicking. I thought I was going to give birth in the car. And we managed to get in there and I said to him, you can't, you can't go into the car, but you're going to have to drop me off at the entrance and... and run up and meet me afterwards I can't I can't walk through I can't walk through it so he dropped me off at the entrance and I was hobbling through the hospital and there's I was she stopped me <sighs> clearly heavily in labor and a few people stopped and went are you all right and a few people just looked absolutely terrified walking past me because there's me by my by myself just clutching some labor nose going <laughs> like a right brat and I got to the stairs and Darren had caught up with me he'd managed to park right at the back of the car park get all the way through the car park through to the hospital front entrance, through the hospital and get to them and all I've got is to the stairs. I was like, oh my God, how slow am I walking? Um, so we managed to uh, get up the stairs. We got to the labour and delivery bit and rang the bell and they were like, yeah, come on in. And then they saw me walking down the ho down the hall bit, going, oh, 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 every few minutes. And they're like, right, let's just go in this room. Let's not go to reception. We'll just go straight in the room. And they're like, right, okay, you so see you're clearly in labour. I was like, <laughs> At this point, I was like, really, uh, still like, this is really strong. These are really, really, really strong contractions. I had two kids before. None of them were this bad. Um, none of them, like thousands of them. E neither of those two previous labours were this bad. And I've had a back-to-back -back delivery before. So I was in, like, complete, like, shock at this point. So they are like, can you, can you get your trousers and your pants off? So I literally, I got onto the bed and they examined me and there was a bit of confusion. They were like, oh, the first one said you're about nine centimetres and she was a student. And I said, I've got a retroverted universe, uh, uterus and she wasn't, universe? A retroverted uterus and she wasn't 100% sure. So the other midwife who was training her, oh, oh, she checked and she said, oh no, she's more like a six. And I was like, really? I, I swore I was going to be pushing in that car. So I was a bit shocked. Um... It would be about a bit bigger than that. Yeah, they did. And, um, so, sorry, I'm getting the after pain, and they are horrible. They're easing off now. They're not as bad as they were, but no one tells you with your, the more kids you have, the, the more painful they are. They are ridiculously painful. They felt like contractions with her. Awful. For the last couple of days, really hurt. Um, so, yeah, I got onto the bed. I was on the bed and they examined me and the second they were done I jumped off the bed and I, and I literally had just taken my trousers and my pants off and I was still wearing my top. I hadn't got my nightdress or anything and they were like, okay, well, you're, you're doing all right. And I was having so many contractions, I was like saying, oh, I'm going to get the nightdress out in a minute and I'll do this and I'll do that. And then I was just pacing and I was holding on to bed and then I was like, my legs shaking so bad because it was so intense, so strong that... Um, I couldn't, I couldn't stand up properly, so I ended up climbing back onto the bed, and the bed was like that, so this is the bed, and this, by hand, is the bed head, so the bed head was up, so I was leaning over on that, on all fours, but sort of in the air, and, um, I was just saying, I can't stand, I've got, I've got to sit, I've got to kneel down, but I, I wouldn't lay on the bed, I don't do beds in labour normally, I would, I wouldn't have, would, no, I wasn't laying on it at all, and I just said, oh my god, I need, I need to push, I'm pushing, I'm pushing, and, um, 
they were like, oh, no, no, you're only at about six. I was like, oh, I'm starting to push. And she said, can you, um, can you turn around? So, oh, it's gone dark. Uh, can you turn around so we can land me? You're like, no. <laughs> they're like, well, we just need you to land. You're like, no, it's not happening. I'm not moving. And they're like, well, I need to, you were only six centimetres. I don't think it's a good idea to push you. Well, well there's a head in my vagina. <laughs> She's coming. And they're like, okay. And I went, oh, and I'm going for a poo. <laughs> And they were like, okay then. And I said to Darren before we left, I need to poo, but I can't. I just can't with the contractions. I'm too tense. I can't actually poo. I said, I'm so good at poo in labour. And in the car, I text my friend Emily going, I'm good at poo in labour because I need a poo and I can't go for one. So it's so coming out when I'm pushing. She was like, yay! Because as I said before, we've joked about the whole poop thing. And I didn't poo with the first two. And we actually kind of wanted me, you know, we actually all wanted me to poo. I think even Darren kind of wanted me to poo. Just, just, I don't know, it became such a long standing joke, didn't it? About pooing in labour. He's reading the newspaper and ignoring me. Well, it did, so it was actually brilliant that I actually managed to poo. I'm really proud of myself, and I'm aware that makes me weird. And most women would pretend they didn't. I did, and I'm okay with it. I actually pooped, and it was all good. So I felt really bad. I said to the midwife, I am sorry, but it's, it's going to happen. <laughs> and they're like, that's fine. I was like, yep, yeah, not worried. Most people poo in labour, bring it. And um, so, yeah, when she said that, she's like, oh, you you know, you were only at six, need to examine you. And I was like, literally, there's a head in my vagina. And she sort of looked around, she went, oh, yes, there is. Okay, let's get some gloves on. <laughs> So then I was pushing and she was born. And I didn't see her properly. I sort of looked between my legs as she came out. And the midwife caught her. Um, and then she put her down. And after a minute of like just trying to catch my breath because it was so quick, so fast, that I sort of turned around and I got her skin to skin on my chest. And they said, do you, do you want to see what she definitely is? And I was like, what babe, what babe definitely is? She may be a bloody girl, got a load of pink stuff at home. And Darren looked, he's like, I can't tell. Because <laughs> he was just like, uh, uh, almost as over, well, almost as overwhelmed as I was. And not quite as much bad, I don't think. But you were in, like, shock still, weren't you? Like, oh, my God, what the hell just happened? <laughs> I've only been in the room for 20 minutes and all of a sudden there's a baby here. Um, so that was quite funny. It was just, yeah, both of us were like bunny rabbits in the headlights. Um, overwhelmed much? It's like, seriously, that is the word for that labour is overwhelming or overwhelmed. And, um, so, yeah, oh, excuse me, sorry. I should have written notes because I'm just so retarded at the minute from the lack of sleep and all the hormones and everything. But, um, yeah, so that, that was amazing, um, having her out and everything. So I had my skin to skin and I said, I want the physiological delivery of placenta. I don't want any drugs. I hadn't had anything. They'd offered me gas now when I was pushing, but I don't like it. So I had, I'd had nothing at all. Um, any point um, I had inquired when we got into room said quite like a water birth and they said oh someone's just delivered in there so we'll clean it up but when it's clean we'll let you know and I said I want strep B so they said I might not be allowed and she went no no that's fine you can have the birthing pool when it's ready we'll just ring the doctors and get the antibiotics ready for you obviously I never got to that point I never got the antibiotics I never got the birthing pool I never got anything I got to get on a bed and give birth within you know 20 minutes of getting into the room uh, can't complain really I suppose when it comes down to it I suppose I'm lucky that I had an extremely quick labour even though it was very intense but you were done you know she could have just come out earlier and given me more warning in the labour but no no we decided to leave it to last minute and then run she's like a sprinter um I love you so much so yeah we're, we're all like there all quite shocked including the student midwife bless her that was actually really funny is after we'd done it and they'd gone off and they'd cleared her up and they'd checked me out and unfortunately even though my sister she promised me a bucket crutch and I wouldn't tear she lied she lied to me the cow I was still stuck with her because they're like you've got a really bad second degree tear they thought it was a third degree tear and they're checking me out like, no no it's a second degree tear but it still was three layers of stitching I tore through all my muscles everything and I'm not impressed at all. I was like, my sister told me I'd be a bucket crutch and this wouldn't happen. She said, well, have you been doing your pelvic floor exercises? I was like, yeah. She goes, well, that, that's what happens. You push because you've got the muscle tone. But, you you know, she said it was so quick your body didn't get a chance to do it. And because of the scar tissue anyway, it makes it more fragile. And because the whole thing was really, really, really quick, that... Um, it, I just tore again so sorry if that's TMI and people are sitting there going ha ah, ha trust me it's not particularly pleasant but it's not the end of the world I'll take it take it for you you beautiful little thing um so yeah it was all really like completely crazy and then um the midwife the the other midwife had gone off and the, the student midwife came in and she said I, I hope you don't mind and luckily my kids are absorbed in other things 
She just came and she said, I don't, I don't hope you don't, hope you don't mind. I don't mean it to be rude, but bloody hell. I was like, you're telling me. She's like, I've never known a baby like that. She's like, oh, hello, you know, my name's such and such. But, oh, look, there's a baby. I was like, yep, yeah, pretty scary. So I had to stay in for 24 hours obs because I hadn't, as I said, had the antibiotics. But thankfully they agreed that they weren't going to give, uh, stab Edith without any need. They, they said, well, we, we don't really do that anymore. What we do is we do observations and if there's any doubt to infection then we put them on antibiotics if there's no doubt if there's no like real fear and you you don't feel the need then we, we're not going to put a load of antibiotics into a baby unless they need them so that that was fine by me i was like that's great um so we stayed on labor and delivery for a, for a fair whack a fair amount of time because i'd had her at half nine and what time did i get moved across to the postnatal ward about half five. Yeah, about half past five so that was that was fine by me because you know it's a bigger room there's more space it's private it's not a ward or anything but they had like no beds on antenatal and i was like damn it i would have happily have had her had a cup of tea and gone home but i was completely wiped considering it was only two hour labor it was so intense and so strong i was completely like knocked out good job baby girl oh very good aren't you ellis um but i was just completely like oh i didn't get to sleep or anything because i could, just couldn't settle um i was too absorbed with this little, little she's so precious it's so precious oh you're looking sad face now you might get to hear her cry in a minute then um that was the other one so yeah i stayed on there and then i went across to a uh, postnatal ward and stayed in for the night for observations and i checked her every hour so i didn't get any sleep at all that night either but um i just sort of laid there staring at this little one just being completely enthralled with her absolutely just honestly i love her pieces and uh thankfully we got to come home the next day i pushed for it and i got out just in time we literally um left the hospital and swung by Alice's play school and picked her up on the way home came home had a bit of a rest and then we got I met George from school picked him up so he got to um see Edith again because they come in when I was in the hospital and everything that was quite nice but they didn't stay for very long and um and yeah that that was it really I mean I could go on and on but there's the rest of it's pointless and I don't want this video to go over 20 minutes um My kids are crazy. But yeah, she's absolutely gorgeous. I said she's got the birthmark over her left eye, but she's still perfect regardless of that. Um and just just I'm amazed. I'm still in shock. I'm I'm in awe. I'm just absolutely overwhelmed by her. And what I'll do is when she's a week old, I'll aim to do a week update and hopefully she'll be awake or whatever and I'll be able to flash her a bit better because at the minute she's just Yes, she's a sleepy girl. She's a sleepy girl. Don't you? A little red chin where her skin's peeled because she's so overcooked. And she's got a little dry hands and feet, but we've got olive oil that we're putting on to help with that. Haven't we, baby? Yes, we do. I love her so much. Anyway, I'm going to get off. Get off. Um do other bits and I will speak to you all soon I hope you all have a, a lovely week and I'm sorry that this video is a very blah but this is the truth of having given birth um, two days ago your brain's still not firing on, on all cylinders by any stretch I'm still completely like ah. um, but euphoric Finish. good job mate you're so good that came out a bit wrong never mind so we're gonna love you and leave you and I will catch you all up in about a week's time and do a one week update and see how everything's going then. Um, good luck to everyone still waiting to pop their babies out. Um, like Jessie, yours will be coming up soon. I know Bex is possibly having her soon. I'm very excited. Congratulations to Courtney from Carlin Court and congratulations obviously to Chantel from uh, Aussie Mummy since 07 who both had their little babies, a Grayson and a Kayla. That is actually brilliant. And I'm not I'm not as jealous now I've got mine. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's it. I'm going to go because this is greatly overrunning. I love you all and I will speak to you all soon. Bye.